Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack and we're finally going to be going through the newest versions of IC2. It's kind of an experimental build. Um, we're going to start with basic power and machines and work all the way up to nuclear. There's been a lot of great changes to this mod. Um, some of them you'll be really happy with, some of them you may not be very happy with. But uh, sit tight and uh, let's get going. All right, so before we get into some of the machines, I'm going to show you some of the most basic fundamental items that are going to be used all throughout this mod. Now, I'm going to be showing very limited number of recipes um, in this tutorial series, um, but basically, once you have the basics of this mod figured out, everything is, is really the same moving forward. Right here, we have a forge hammer, and that's just crafted by some iron and sticks, and that's going to be your basic way to uh, start making plates. And the, one of the first plates you'll need is iron plates, so you just take your forge hammer, put it inside a crafting grid, and I'll do that for you real quick. Grab an iron ingot, and you're going to bang it into a plate, and it will tell you how many uses you have left there. And then once you have a plate, you can go ahead and smash that again to get two iron item casings. So that's going to be, um, these are components that are going to be used all throughout in various different machines. Some of them are going to be bronze plate, bronze item casings, and so on and so forth. Um, but the recipes vary depending on your machine. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and, and look for some rubber trees, and the rubber trees have a very distinctive look in that the very top of the trees in the center kind of sticks up a little bit farther than the rest. So if you're looking out into a forest of a whole bunch of trees and you're not sure which one is a rubber tree, you can uh, identify them by the uh, little pointy thing sticking up there. The rubber trees are important because you're going to need rubber, and to get the rubber out of them, you're going to need a tree tap. And we'll go over that in a second and how to far farm this stuff. From that, you'll get the sticky resin out of the tree, and then you run it through a... Uh, uh, furnace of some sort and get uh, rubber. Next we have the machine casing and this is made by using eight iron plates and that's your basic uh, machine casing for all of your basic machines. Um, you have your electronic circuit and finally you have copper cable. You're going to need a lot of a lot, a lot of rubber. Um, a lot of these uh, electronic circuits you're going to be literally making hundreds of them and uh, a ton of this copper cable. So those are the basic things that you'll need to get started with this mod. All right, so I built myself a little industrial craft two house, and it's got a bunch of basic things in it. Um, nothing very complicated, and we're going to go through it block by block. But first, let's go ahead and grab this tree tap and go find some rubber. And you can see that rubber looks just like this on the side of trees. And if you right-click it, you'll get uh, an achievement, and you'll get some sticky resin, and that'll be really important. Um, if you want to uh, place your trees like this, once you have some saplings, put them down, use some bone meal on them, and... Uh, Cut down all the leaves on them. It's a really easy way to see all of the rubber on your trees, and you can just go ahead and harvest it as needed. All right, now a lot of things in this mod are very, um, they're just the same thing that you've always been used to. Um, some things are tweaked a little bit, some are a little bit different, um, but let's go through them real quick. We have the the iron furnace here, and this is just a basic furnace. Um, you, you put your uh, stuff in there like that, and uh, it really is just a little bit faster than a cobblestone furnace or just a stone furnace, I believe. Um, but that's a basic block that I see too adds into his mod there. But uh, first, we're going to need to uh, generate some power. And I have three basic um, ways to generate power. I'll, sh I'll show you the best best last there. Um, we have uh, the windmill up top there. And I'm going to grab some uh, basic scaffolding used by, uh, or put in this mod by IC2. I'm going to get out of creative mode. And I'm going to go ahead and right click. Uh-oh, not high enough. Let's grab some more, right click on the bottom, and that will raise the scaffolding until I can see it, until I can get up there. Um, there's various different types of scaffolding, and we'll go through them um, as we go through this tutorial. Um, we have the windmill, and you can put a battery in here to charge the battery, that's all that's for. Basically, uh, the GUI up top there, or the little tooltip, will tell you that it will either generate, uh, well, it, it will tell you that it'll generate for you, partake, but that's not always the case. Because this block, um, depending on the height in the sky, and there's a mathematical equation that you can use to figure it out, um, depending on how high in the sky this is will depend on how much EU it will generate. It will also depend on if there's blocks around it. I think it's a 4x3x4 four by by four, um, area around it. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, let me chop these down there, get all my scaffolding back. Um, but that's just one of the ways that will generate an anywhere from uh, 1 to 4 EU per tick, and uh, it will generate a little bit more when it's uh, rainy and stormy outside. Okay. So what I have is some of this copper cable, and the copper cable is just made by uh, rolling out some, some copper and putting it next to um, a piece of rubber inside a crafting grid. And uh, that's how you extract the power from his machines here. And we're going to 
get this power, we're going to send it down and we're going to load it into a back box and you can see that the power is very, very slowly filling up. So this is not a very good way to get power. I really don't recommend this. Uh, making efficient wind farms is, is hard because you have to put a whole bunch of them um, really spread out and far apart and you got this wiring issue here um, where you got wires everywhere. It's, it's really ugly. It's not very, not very sightly, but that is one of the ways that you can, um, you can get some power. Um, a bat box is basically a tier one storage unit, and uh, IC2 has uh, graciously broken down all of its uh, power items into um, tiers for us, um, tier three being the highest. Let's just go ahead and take a quick look at how to make this, this bat box. Um, this will actually take some insulated tin cable, which is the worst cable, I believe, and some RE batteries, which are crafted with uh, some of these tin casings, which we already knew how to make, and then... Uh, some tin cable, which is made by just putting some rubber next to um, this piece of tin cable. And then this is how you cut some wire to make these. And uh, I'll show you an easier way to do that with this uh, metal former in just a second. Okay, so that's the windmill. Um, not very good way to generate power, but it is an option. Next, we have a water mill. And water mills are a little bit better than the windmill. And uh, you can actually manually put some water in there and it'll kind of start making it an image of a bucket um, or you can just put it in still water and if it's in still water it's really not going to be making um, too much EU per tick. Um, right now this is only putting out I believe maybe one to two EU per tick and I have it attached to some copper cable and I'll explain to you why that's colored in a second and I have three of them here together hooked up to this bat box and the bat box is it's slowly filling up. Um, it's filling up way faster than, than it would if there was uh, three windmills attached. Um, but that's how you can just harness some free renewable energy. Um, basic GUI here. There we go. Put some water in the water mill. Um, this is a slot for the battery. You can charge up a, an RE battery or a lithium battery or whatever kind of battery that you happen to have. So I have these three hooked up here. They're all going into a bat box and you can see up top there that it's filling up. Now the other neat thing that you can do with the uh, water mill is that you can place uh, a bunch of different cells, or water cells, so you can place water cells inside of them to uh, significantly speed up production of power. So you see this one's going up relatively slowly. If you get a bunch of water cells and put them inside of there and fill it up, the EU per tick is going to drastically increase. So it's not actually a bad way to get power. The only problem is you're going to start burning through these water cells like crazy, and the water cells are going to burn uh, resources because you actually need uh, a little bit of tin to make them. Okay, so that may not be the best option for you. Unfortunately, you just can't pump water straight into these with like a, a fluid duct or something. Um, but that is an option, and that is the oh, if I can get out of here, that is the water mill. Finally, what I'm going to recommend if you want to just uh, use kind of an IC2 only build, um, I'll recommend the generators. And uh, the generators are basically coal powered, and uh, they'll produce I believe 10 EU per tick which is significantly more than either of the others. Um, they do burn coal, so they, they use more resources than the others. Um, but coal is pretty easy to find in the world, so it shouldn't really be too big of a deal. So you can see we're getting a lot of power from three of these generators, which is plenty of power to power all the machines that we have upstairs. Um, while I'm down here, let me quick talk about um, the bat box and the input and output facings. Um, this is the output facing of a bat box and you can attach uh, cabling straight to it. If you shift click you can attach a cable to it. Um, anything that's on any other facing but this little circle here will be power input. This will be power output. Okay so you just want to configure your uh, your wiring setups that way. You see I have power coming out of the generator and into the bat box here. Same thing with over here and this one's directly attached to the generator so that it will get power um, without needing to be hooked up with cable. And on the very top here which is hard to see and you can't see it at all um, this is my output side, and this is outputting my power to all my various machines up top here. So let me climb my scaffolding, and I'll show you what the machines up top do. The macerator is one of the first machines that you are going to want to make. Um, and this basically works the same way as a pulverizer. It will take your ores, and we're going to go ahead and grab some, uh, some ore here. It will take your ores, and it will smush them down. Let me get rid of this crushed uranium. Um, these machines are not very fast, uh, comparable to a uh, pulverizer. It's not really that great of an option, but they can be sped up, and we'll talk about um, how to speed them up in a later episode. The macerator, along with most of these machines, also has a slot for an RE battery that you can throw in there in, if you don't want to hook it up like directly to power. So what this is going to do is it's going to crush down the ore and make two crushed iron ore. Once it's crushed, it's going to smelt it into an ingot, 
And uh, I have this set. I'll show you one of the upgrades right now because it is a pretty easy upgrade to make, um, the ejector upgrade. Let me just show you real quick here. Um, just a hopper, a couple pistons. There's those electronic circuits. You're gonna, I'm telling you, you're going to make a lot of them. Um, it's just a little bit of copper cable there um, to make that upgrade. And basically what you can do with this upgrade is if you can take it and you can right-click on the machine. So if I right-click here, if I shift right click, excuse me, you'll see that the graphic on the bottom of my screen changed and that just means the item, um, that just means the machine will output through the top. I can do the front like that and you can see as the arrows are changing um, the various different um, graphics on my, uh, whatever this thing is, an ejector upgrade is making. And uh, the ejector upgrade will allow the machine to automatically output to uh, whichever side that you have it set to. So I have this ejector upgrade and it's very self-explanatory. Up in the upgrade spot of this, you can put on um, battery upgrades, all different types of things. Again, we'll talk about them later. And I have this directly outputting into an electronic furnace. Um, previously, you needed like a conveyor upgrade uh, and so on and so forth, or you couldn't even do it. You had to use pipes and wires and so on and so forth. Um, so this is a way that uh, you can make your setups pretty compact and one of the new things about this version of IC2. Um, you can see how much power they consume and how much power they can store. So all these machines have a little bit of an internal storage buffer. If I go ahead and grab a, just to demonstrate this, let me grab an energy storage upgrade and throw it inside of here. You'll see that we're at 780 EU internal storage. Um, if I shift right click, we'll drop that into there and go up uh, to 10,000 more. So that's going to increase and you can just see that right in the tooltip. No big deal. All right, and I have another upgrade here, and it's just pumping it right out and putting it into this chest over here. So this is a really simple way to uh, start doubling your ore output. Next, we're going to talk about some uh, some other machines. We're going to talk about the extractor here. This one's pretty cool. This is what you're going to use your, your sticky resin in. Now, you can, let me just grab some, um, I believe you can run your sticky resin just through a regular furnace. However, you're only going to get one. Oh, good grief. You're only going to get one ball of rubber per sticky resin, and you definitely do not want to want to do that. So as quickly as possible, you're going to want to go ahead and make this thing called an extractor. And it's a little bit uh, heavier power than the other ones, but uh, it's fairly simple simple to make. Just a couple tree taps, again, some, some casing, some plates. And go ahead and throw some uh, sticky resin inside of your extractor, which is going to go pretty slow at the start with no upgrades in it but it will give you three rubber for every one sticky resin. So this is a really great machine. Again, spot for upgrades here, spot for a battery here, in case you don't want to hook it up to power, or in case you just want to place it in the world, and um, move it around. Okay, so there we go, there's our three rubber, and you can see a neat little graphic on the front here. Next, we have a compressor, and the compressor um, is used for various things. Uh, once we encounter some of the things that we'll actually need, we'll go ahead and start compressing some stuff on, on uh, camera here. Um, this is raw carbon mesh. It's basically just um, coal in various forms, and you can put this inside a compressor to make some carbon plate. Carbon plate is a, a very easy thing to make if you have a compressor, and uh, this will be used to make nano armor and a lot of other um, advanced things later on in game. But the compressor has a lot of uses, and again, we'll check them when uh, we get to them. The metal former. Um, this will basically replace your forge hammer, and uh, all you have to do is put an iron ingot um, or whatever ingot that you want over there, and uh, see I have this as an empty battery, but you can put it there. And it will basically roll out the metal into a plate for you. Bam, just like that. And you'll actually get two plates, so it's way better than the forge hammer, okay? Um, so again, this is one of the things that makes uh, the recipes in this new experimental IC2 a little bit better. Okay, you can set this to a bunch of different modes, too. You can switch to cutting, and uh, I would have to have some, uh, some let me see some of this in here if I wanted to cut something to uh, make some wire. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. We saw that earlier with the uh, recipe for the tin. Let's cut some of this stuff. Oh, that gives me an industrial credit. Never mind. Um, don't want to do that. But uh, you'll need to cut soon. Let's go ahead and do extruding. Oh, there we go. That's a, no, I'm sorry. That'll make the uh, the piece. I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, but uh, you get the point. Um, so the metal former, really, really good machine. You're going to definitely want one or, or more of these machines in order to uh, increase your output of all these different things, pieces of wire that you're going to need. Here's some HV cable, just out of some simple simple ironing. It's, this is really good stuff, carries a lot of EU, um, and so on and so forth. So that's the metal former. doesn't use very much power, and it's fairly easy to make. 
Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at the bottling plant. And this is a kind of a new um, concept for IC2, a little bit uh, different here. Uh, basically, you can take and store liquids inside an internal buffer and uh, load them up into something. So if I take some, some uh, empty cells and I put an empty cell here, it's going to fill up and it's going to drop it over here just like that. It's going to use some of the water from inside. If I go ahead and put it in the top there, it's going to empty out the cell and put it inside of the buffer in there, just like that. Okay, And you can do that with uh, with buckets and, and all types of other stuff. There we go. That's the bottling plant. Um, we'll use that a little bit later on. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have the canning machine. And the canning machine uh, is a little bit more practical later on when we get into nuclear stuff. But uh, in any case, uh, basically what you do is you take some tin cans and you combine them. Um, with something like steak and you can go ahead and get to fill tin can and uh, this will be used in conjunction uh, with some of the more higher tier um, power pieces and uh, again it'll be used in in some of the nuclear uh, fuel rod engineering don't know why I just turned that on okay but that's the canning machine fairly simple to make none of this is very complex and before I log off for the time being, let's go ahead and just take a look at actually how many items are in IC2. Okay, there are tons and tons and tons. Oh, uh, lead is a new, lead dust, new to IC2. Um, there's a bunch of new, new different ores and stuff and a bunch of new things about uranium, really exciting stuff. Oh, the painters, I forgot the painters, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, a wrench too. You can use a wrench to uh, get your machines back. Bloop, right click. Right click, gets all your stuff back. Try not to do that by accident. Um, out here, yeah, I have this little uh, painter here. And where did it go? And painters are really easy to make. So I have an orange painter here. And you can actually um, make little networks of your wires. You can, um, depending on the amount of power that's going through them, you can use a painter and it will uh, have only orange wires or basic cable connect to this. And uh, painter is just made by some uh, some orange dye and a regular pan. Okay, pretty simple to make. All right, so this is just some basic IC2 power. Uh, we got generators down in the basement, which again I'll recommend. And we got some of these uh, basic machines, two of which I destroyed: the macerator and uh, electric furnace. And we have this extractor, which you're definitely going to need right away to start making tons and tons of this rubber. And uh, we will go to episode two and three, which is right over there, where we will talk about tools, armor, and finally, um, power generation, higher power tiers, and how to um, scale up or scale down your power depending on your voltage. So that's episode one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you give it a thumbs down, uh, tell us why, because uh, we'd like to know. So that's it. Uh, check us out in all of our uh, social media outlets uh, listed here. And as always, guys, stay poised.